you come before God. We make a petition before God. Yeah. Just like when we get married, we go before the altar, and we go before God, and we promise and say, God, I'm going to live with this woman, or I'm going to live with this man, that's going to be forever. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to change my mind. Amen. It's forever. Yeah. And that's the way it is when we come before God. Right. We can't come before God and just let things go by, just make you feel better for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it works. No. Amen. God's not going to work just for a little while. Right. Amen. God wants you to come all the way. Amen. He wants all your heart, yes, all yes. your mind. Nowhere yes. in the Bible where people come part of the way. That's right. You can't get there on somebody else's prayers. No. You're going to have to go to yourself. Amen. God is going to come and every one of us is going to get on the camera. Right. Right. And I know sometimes, a lot of times, we have left the impression with people with prayer cloths with anointing people that if they just get anointed or if they just get a prayer cloth they can continue living the way they live and everything's going to be okay. God's going to work things out. But you ain't the way it works. Amen. That's not Bible. That's right. I know but it's a good it's a good feeling yeah. to feel that way but I'm going to tell you what there's a heaven and there's a hell. Amen. There really is a hell. Amen. Amen. There's a burning hell. Amen. And if we leave this world and we're not ready to meet God we're going to burn in the lake of our prayer. Amen. And I know you say, well, you're, you're hard. But I know I'm, I'm serious because I don't want to see nobody. Right. Go down to the lake of fire and burn forever. I'll pick up the newspaper here recently. It seems like every time I pick up the paper, somebody's dying. I see one friend of mine where he's committed suicide this week. Amen. I don't know the condition he's in, but I know the devil can get you in such a place yeah. and get your mind so tormented that you'll say, I'm going to take my life. Yeah. But you know what? People don't know that they're getting run out of trouble into the fire. Yeah. Come run out of fire frying pan right into the fire. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I remember as a young man, there's times that I was so troubled with the life that I was living and I was running from God. Yeah. I was running because I knew better than the things I was doing. And it was in my mind to shoot myself with a gun. I even had the gun, Brother Johnny. Yeah. But you know, I'm glad that when I grew up as a child in church, and my Uncle Taylor taught me that if you ever commit suicide, that's the last thing you do. You sin against God. Yeah. You can't your own body. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if you kill yourself, you can't get forgiveness. Yeah. There's no forgiveness. I know that you watch all this garbage on TV and it, it gives people say how it's a great thing to give your life and go on. But I'm going to tell you what, Taylor, you're going to have to stand before God. Yeah. The Bible said it's appointed unto man wants to die. Yeah. And after this, the judgment. I don't care who you are. No, I'm not the judge. And I tell people, no one. I go to a funeral. I say they will preach their own funeral. Yeah. They're going to stand before God with their own self. Yeah. I don't have hope for some. Some I do, but I try to have hope for everybody because I say God, they're in your hands. I know you're a merciful God. I know you can change things, but I've seen God turn people around. Yeah. I've seen people in trouble, bad trouble. You know, I, I heard the, the other night, thank God, that right here in Lawrence County, there's 40 people that committed suicide. They yeah. died on a drug overdose right here in Lawrence County, Ohio. Oh. Thank God. You think about that in a year, thank God, that people have given their lives over to the devil. I said, yeah. You know what? The devil sits flat because he knows I'm God. The Bible said he knows that his time is short yeah. and he's going to do everything he can, thank God, to take people down to the lake of God. I'll tell you what, he wants the old, he wants the young. Yeah. Amen. But you know what? The Bible said, remember the creator today is your youth, mm -hmm. that your days may be long yeah. upon the earth. I'll tell you what, this is serious thing yeah. tonight. Yeah. Amen. That we come before God because God is going to give us give account of everything that we've ever done. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you what, you can't get so miserable without That's God. Right. If you know the story of Judas, Judas, he turned against the Lord yeah. for 30 pieces of silver. Amen. He sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Today, people are selling him out for a whole lot less. Yeah. Giving a whole lot less. They're taking the world and yeah. giving away Jesus. Now, I can, you can ask people today, say, what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? Well, I was going to do that. I was going to go to church. I, I was, was going to do I've been meaning to come. I had my boy, he was 18 years old, stood in my living room on a Thursday night. 
I'll never forget this. So when I first come to the Lord, and I said, I was trying to get him to come to church with me and tell him, I said, there's a better way. I said, man, this drugging and partying, this life that you're living, I said, there's a better way if you want to change. I said, you can change. And, and he said, well, you know, he said, I'm thinking about coming. He said, I'm thinking about coming to church with you. And I went up north, thank God, and, 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 and just in a few days, I got a phone call that this boy got killed in a car wreck. Thank God. I don't know what condition he was in, Brother Johnny, but my heart grieved. <laughs> well, I think just said that one night. He said, yes, Lord, thank God. Get right down to the end of the way. Thank God. And, 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 and fall out. Yeah. And get and lose your life. And you know what? People die every day. Hey, the young people, old people. I've been in this thing for a long time. I've done funerals for old people. I've done people that funerals for little babies. Thank God, it wasn't even old enough to have a casket. Put them yeah. in a little starboard box and take them over here and bury them at the cemetery. And it'll leave a grieving heart. But every time death comes, it should be a reminder that God is coming back again. Right. That's because of sin. That's why death is in the world. Thank God. There wouldn't have been no death. Thank God. If man hadn't sin in the beginning. Thank God, and I'll tell you today, that's why death is reigning over people's lives, and sin is because they won't live for God. Amen. Do you think God gives us His commandments because He wants to be mean to us? No. He loves us. He sees trouble out in front of us. He sees the things that's wanting to destroy us. That He can give you peace. I tell you what, when I came to the Lord, I didn't even have an automobile to drive. Didn't have a driver's license. Didn't have a job. Didn't have anything. But when the Lord came in my life, He began to work for me, thank God. But you know what? I had to work too. Yeah. Amen. I had to start going to church. Yeah. It was up to me to go to church. I needed to sit under teaching. Yeah. I needed someone to teach me. Yeah. The Bible said, how can we hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except to be sent? That's why people can't get established. Because they won't sit under nobody yeah. long enough to learn anything, but it's going to take something to get you through. That's why God has set up a government, thank God, so that He can get His people through. Hey God, this thing has started off, amen, you start off to repent of your sins, amen, and that's good, and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of preachers that's preaching, repent and be baptized and get the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of preachers preaching that, and there's a lot of people doing it, but they're not taking people any farther than that. That's as far as they're going. They go far enough to get the water, and then they go and get the they want to. They go get the things that they've learned, the things they've been taught. They live any old way they want to. They choose what they want to do. But the Bible said, the Lord said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. If you're not serving the word of the Lord that's of the Bible, then you're serving another Lord. Thank God. You're serving another God that has power over this whole world. Thank God and all the things that's in it. Amen. There's no sin in Jesus Christ. No. No sin. No. Amen. You say, well, we all sin. You better not. That's right. Amen. People say, well, we sin a little bit every day. You better sin a lot less. Amen. Amen. Because you're going to be lost. And I'm going to tell you what. If you have re had them sins remitted, you're, 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 got, you're standing before God unprepared. Yeah. You're, going, you're going to be lost. Amen. Amen. In other words, when I repented of my sins, I had to go be baptized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a backslider. But I'll tell you what. When I went out in the world and lived in sin and done the things of the world, drank and swarped around, the Holy Ghost that I had, it didn't go with me. No. And the blood that covered my sins, it didn't go with me. No. Because when I left God, it left me, Amen. thank God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, when I came back, I had to start over, Brother Johnny. Amen. And I know a lot of preachers don't preach this. They don't tell people Amen. that they've got to start over, that they need to repent of their sins, they need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. That's where the blood's applied, thank God. And it'll apply to your soul. And it'll keep you throughout your life as long as you don't go back and graze on the other side of the path. But I'll tell you what, you've got to stay in the path tonight and walk with God all the way. You can't quit. God don't want no quitters in His army. In His arm that armory did, it was for the front. It was not for the back. God wants you to go forward tonight. And God has all power tonight. He's got so much power, He can even raise from the dead. And then you think about that. He raised from the dead. Hallelujah. We bury people all the time. There's not enough power to bring them back. But one day, he's going to speak. And they're going to raise up. And they're going to hear his voice. I've got hope for a lot of people. This old cemetery over here got a lot of good souls in it. But one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And those that's brought their race are going to have a victory. Hallelujah. I just don't want people to feel good. I want them to live right. Amen. Amen. Bless them all. No, I ain't popular no. because 
like for instance, holiness. Amen. What was taught to me right here in this church all my life. Yes. Amen. The brothers that taught me, I'm still teaching it. Amen. I'm still holding it up. It's like they was handed down to me. I mean, say amen. amen. It's still good. Amen. It was good when Peter preached it. It's amen. good when Brother Johnny preached amen. it. It's amen. good tonight. Amen. But we got to go farther than where we're right. at. That's right. Amen. Go with me tonight. Look at Peter. Second Peter. Second Peter. God is good tonight. And I'm going to tell you, preaching is good, but we need teaching. The church needs to be taught. Everybody believes everything. Yes, they do. Young people get in church and they know more than preaching us. Yeah. They've learned more in science class at school than what they know they've learned in church. Yeah. Because they don't sit under instruction. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if you don't go to school and you don't get an education, you're not going, you're not going to be very smart. No. Amen? Amen? When I went to school, I wasn't very smart. You know why? Because I didn't listen. I went to school, my mother and dad sent me to school, I didn't pay no attention. The only reason I went there is because I had to. I got my grades when the football season was in because I know they'd make me, they'd get, kick me off the team or yeah. mom and dad wouldn't let me play. But after football season was over, I didn't care. I'd just do whatever I wanted to. I got out of school. I was done on a cold boat. I couldn't, I couldn't even read when I graduated from high school. That's the truth, children. I'm telling you right now. I read two books the whole time I was in school. I never, both of them was about football. I never learned anything, thank God. But you know why? It was my choice to be that way. There was educators there. There was good teachers there. There was good people there. The books was there. The knowledge was there. But I didn't get it, thank God, because I didn't make a, a, an effort. And that's what people want today. People want to go to heaven without making any effort, not learn anything about it, not getting strong in the thing. But I'm going to tell you what, you're going to have to grow in the Lord tonight because if we're going to go tonight, we're going to go there on, on that marker. God said out a mark, we need to go to that mark. And you know, I said there's a plan of salvation right back there on the wall. And they ever one of the children are getting to recite it here on a Sunday morning and to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. How many believe that tonight? And he said, You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, Brother Peter, he was the first one to preach that message uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and it was good then and it's good now. Let me say, Amen. It did say the Jews. He'll save us. And if that wasn't enough, he was the one that went to the Gentiles in the 10th chapter. And he preached the same message. And they got in the same way. In the early church, that's the way it started out. The young people's learning about, they got about the Acts of the Apostles. They got Sister Sally teaching them how that the book of Acts is the beginning of the church. How it's the actions of the church. They got, when we get in these things, they got, we got to learn for ourselves. We need to know these things. We can't just go on our feelings. Amen. That's what's happened to people. That's yeah. why the church is in the mass today. Right. It's because people's going on their feelings. Amen. You can't go on your feelings. You've got to go on truth. Yeah. Brother Johnny taught a wonderful message this morning about dreams and miracles. There's a lot of miracles and a lot of dreams, a lot of things going on, but everything ain't from God. Amen. If it ain't in the Word of God, then God didn't see it. Right. But I'm going to the first, the second Peter. I'm going to the first chapter. And this same old brother Peter. Amen. Y'all just have to bear with me a little bit. The same old brother Peter, amen, the one that preached on the day of Pentecost, after he had fought and been beat and all the things he went through and carried this message, amen, the same one we're carrying tonight. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was... He suffered a lot of things. He and Apostle Paul, we read how he was beat and stoned and, and even... Peter was crucified, according to history, upside yeah. down. Amen. And they suffered a lot of things. Yeah. And here we are. We don't want to think we can just go through the world and just float along and be accepted by our friends and go along with everybody and sin and live ungodly and dress naked and do all them things and still expect God to say, oh, that's all right. I understand. No, God don't understand. Yeah. He was serious when he died. Yeah. When they drove the nails in his hands, he was serious. Yeah. Amen. There wasn't no joke about it. There wasn't no, I'm almost thinking about it. 
by it. I'm going to get by it. I'll tell you what, God's got a holy people. Amen. That man has compromised. There's so many people. They got, I'll tell you what, I'll talk to people. They've read so many books and they've read all about all these authors, and these authors are deceivers. Hey, God, this I was telling a boy the other day, what about these people? He said, they don't know the Lord. How do you know what they're saying is true? How do you know it's even right? We need to know where things are coming from. If you're getting something from somebody, if you're sitting under somebody, you need to know what kind of life they're living. Hey, God, make them accountable. Hey, God, for the things that they're teaching. I tell you what, this is serious, sir. Hey? Simon Peter says he was a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained, now here's what this, this letter that he wrote, this is who this letter is to. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the what? Righteousness, Righteousness of God our Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, this is to those that is of like faith. Yes. The same faith that they had. As he preached, he said there was Lord and one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It, he, and it's to the people that's of like faith. Yes. It's not just to everybody. Everybody thinks one of the books to everybody, but no, it's to God's people. Yes. God sent these letters to the church. Yes. Pastor yes. Paul, when he wrote these 14 letters, he sent them out to the church. When, when Jude, he wrote his letter, when John wrote the letters, he sent them to the church. They was for the keep us something to go on, something to encourage us along the way. But we've got to run our own race tonight. You know, some of you young people sitting right here in this building tonight, if you're not careful, some of your friends is going to be in hell with you, gnashing on you with their teeth. Yeah. Right. And they're going to be gnashing on you and they're going to be saying, you knew what was right and you didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. You didn't do it. You didn't live it. That's it. And they'll be gnashing on you with their teeth. And you say, well, how do you know this? The Bible said they'll be weeping and gnashing yeah. their teeth. And I'll tell you what, God has put you in a place where you can hear the truth. And, it's, and he expects it. He counts it out of you. He gave it to Jonah. You know the story of Jonah. When God spoke to Jonah, he called him to go and preach. And he wouldn't go. Look what happened to him. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Even the men threw him over the side of the, the ship. And they said, oh, break fish. Or a whale, it opened up its mouth and it swallowed him up. And it's like I've said, the, the miracle was, thank God, it wasn't that the fish swallowed him, but three days later he was still alive. And people don't know that they're living in hell right here on this earth. By the law, their tor minds are tormented. And living, trying to run from this and run from that. And trying to be accepted with this group. Trying to be accepted with that group. And I'll tell you what, hey amen, you can get accepted with Jesus uh, and you'll have peace from all of it tonight. I have a lot of friends. When when I was a sinner, I used to have big Super Bowl parties in my house. And as long as I was supplying the drugs and the drinks, I, I had a big crowd there all the time. I had a lot of friends. And I'll tell you what, when I got in trouble, Brother Johnny, and they put me in the Greenham County Jail, I didn't have a friend. The only people that, have, that served the Lord, that was who my friends was. I ain't got people don't even realize that. They go and do everything for them friends. They die for them friends. They even go to hell for their friends. But you know what? They're friends. Good lift out of the mud hole if you really got in trouble. Amen. You know why? Because they can't. They don't know how. They can't get their self out of the mud hole. They're not going to be able to get you out. I'm telling you, it's a serious thing. But I'll tell you what, well, even I had all them friends, Brother Jim, but I'll never have none. Amen. And yeah, back then I smoked, and I, I even some of them, I tried to get a hold of them, I said, you just send me some cigarettes. Amen. I, I spent all this money on you. I loaned you all this money. Amen. When, when we was out running around. Amen. I figured they was indebted to me, Brother Johnny, but they wasn't. They wanted to stay away from me. They was afraid of me, thank God, because they saw I was in trouble. But I'm going to tell you what, that's the way Jonah was. The wrath of God had come down upon him, and the men was afraid. They was more afraid of God than they was Jonah. That's why they threw him over the side. I'm going to tell you what tonight? The Bible said the wrath of God is upon the children of disobedience. What is that? That's why this world's in shape it's in. Amen. It's because God's wrath yeah. is upon it. People's in darkness and they don't know. Right. You remember in, so in, the, in Sodom and Gomorrah, he said they wandered around the hut for the door. Yeah. It's blinded because of their sin, because of the life they live. That's what the devil, he wants to keep you blinded so he can't find you, thank God. Right. But I'm going to tell you what, the fires are coming. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just like it did on Sodom. And he said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so it shall be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, when the Lord Lord, thank God in this day we're living, you can see it. Sodomy everywhere. Young people, old people, it's all about us. God don't accept us. 
accept that. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to tolerate it, Brother Johnny, because it's all around us. Amen. People's got rights to do what they want to do. And I'm going to tell you what, in the eyes of God, you don't have a right to sin. Amen. You can't sin. He no. died to do away with your sin. But you just think about this. You think of old brother Peter. He was he was an old man. A man here. I don't know. He was maybe a, my, not my age, but he was young when he died. Thank God after he preached. But he went on. He was telling me who this was too. Verse two. He said, "Grace and peace be what multiplied." I mean, that's what multiplied means. Mm -hmm. Amen. When I went to school, I learned how to add first. Amen. Some of school teacher. Kevin's a school teacher. First thing you got to do to add. Brother, if you don't know how to add, you can't learn how to subtract. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to subtract, you don't know how to, you can't learn how to multiply. You cannot learn your multiplication tables unless you know how to add and subtract. It takes steps, and that's what God's word is. Right. That's what your life is. God will show you things step by step. Walk with you people. You look at other people and say, oh, I couldn't live like them. I couldn't be like that. Children, you, you can. Amen. God will help you to change. He'll help you and he'll go with you every day. You know, if I knew all the things I was going to have to do, I might not have ever started myself. But I knew I needed Jesus. I knew I was in trouble. I knew my life was a shamble. Amen. And I needed help. Thank God. So I turned to him and I left the rest of it up to him. But I had to make a start. I had to do something for myself. People says, I can't get a job. You can get a job if you look for one. Yeah. A job we look for one. Yeah. I see people standing all over, homeless yeah. people, and I don't know, maybe I could, could be wrong <laughs> with some of them. God forgive me if I am. But when you see signs all over the place begging for people to work and people standing on the corner begging money, amen, that ain't right. No. Is it? Ain't no. right. If you make the Bible said so we don't work, ain't God. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of our own. You know, we're worse than an infidel. Yeah. And an infidel is an unbeliever, don't even believe in God. Amen. I know these things are hard things, but that's what it says in the Bible. God speaks these things. We need to teach our children these things. That it's, we need to work and we need to take care of our family. Amen. If you, young ladies, you want to find your boyfriend out there, find you somebody that'll work. If you got somebody lazy and they won't work, thank God, you don't want to have nothing to do with them. Well, they're going to have you in the same boat as they was. When my daughter used to bring boys home, I didn't even ask what her name was. I said, where do you work at? Ask Tapta, she'll tell you. That's why I didn't care what her name was. That's where you work at. How long have you been working there? Because I'll tell you what, I'll, if somebody's interested in my daughter, I want to know she's working. They're working. And they're going to take care of my daughter if they're interested in it. Amen. But in the day we're living, everybody just wants a free ride. People don't even want to get married anymore. They just live together. But I'm going to tell you what, they're all going to stand before God. They're going to be in trouble. Amen. But I'll tell you what, Chair, we need to teach our children about these things. We need to teach them about homosexuality. We need to teach children that it's wrong to live with people and it's wrong to have sex with people when you're not married, that you're supposed to keep yourself holy and true before God. And I know it's not popular in this world, but that's what the Bible taught. And it's the same thing we're going to teach. And we're going to stand before God for the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I didn't have a job. Old Sherry, she, she got a bum when she got mad. Amen. But I got a jewel. <laughs> She stuck with me all these years. And I'll tell you what, didn't I have a job? But I, I started going to church and I started putting God first. And I didn't know what how I was going to get my license and all that stuff, Brother Johnny. I had a lot of complications. And I could just threw my hands up and says I just give up. But I kept on going to church. And run two blocks from my house. I was walking, and a guy asked me about doing some work on his house. And I said, sure. And that job ended up going to another job. And, and then I was able to get my driver's license back. And my dad gave me an old truck. And it just seemed like God started walking for God. And God started helping me. Thank God. But I had to make an effort, thank God, to help myself. Amen. When I made that effort, God wants you to make an effort tonight. He did, you can't just sit back and say, here I am, Lord. Do it all. God wants you to do so. you got to make an effort. Pick yourself up tonight. Pull your bootstraps up. Say, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do what he tells me. I'll be saved. Amen tonight. And we want to go for the Lord tonight. I know this stuff ain't popular. And you say, well, you hurt people's feelings. Well, if their feelings get hurt, I'd rather hurt their feelings 
and, and then make it and live for God. Yeah. Amen. And I'll tell you what, my dad used to hurt my feelings, but it was from my behind when yeah. I was growing up. But you know what? He did it because he loved me. That's it. He cared about me. He, he looked out for me down the road. And that's what God is. And if you've got a minister, that's what ministers are supposed to do. They're supposed to look out for the people down the road. Amen. And care about what happens to them tomorrow. Amen. You might be having a hard time today. And God does like Brother Taylor used to say. Just pray about it. Amen. If you get to the place, you can't do nothing else. But you can pray. If you do that, thank God. That's the only thing you can do. If you go as far as you can go, you can't go any farther. Just go there and stand and wait on the Lord. And the Bible said, He'll renew your strength. Amen. You'll mail it with weak to people. I think God will give us power, but we have to make an effort. That's right. We have to make a start. You have to just listen to your voice. Mm -hmm. Listen to God's voice. God's not so far away. He's off in a place where you can't hear Him. That's right. He's right there with you. Mm -hmm. He talks to your heart. He goes to bed with you at night. Yeah. When you lay on your pillow, nobody else knows your troubles like you. But he knows all about them. He knows all your sickness and all your pains and all the things that we're going through in this life. And just like the sister said earlier, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. Yeah. And if you've ever heard his word, if it's ever been presented to you, it's like a seed that's in your heart and it wants to grow. And if you don't let it grow, you'll be miserable throughout your life and you'll get worse and worse. Hallelujah. But the Bible gives an example. You say, well, brother, how do you know that? I'll tell you what. Oh, Cain and Abel. And we know the story of Cain and Abel. Adam, Adam and Eve, they had two sons. Hallelujah. They had one was Abel and one was Cain. And as time went on, Cain killed his brother. Hallelujah to God. But there was something there that was in Cain that long before he took his brother's life. It was exposed, thank God. It was brought out in the open, thank God, that people didn't know it. Amen. That God knew it was there. And when they came to present their offering before the Lord, and Abel offered up his offering, uh, and Cain offered up his, uh, I've heard people say, well, only reason they, uh, that they accepted Abel's offering was because it was a blood offering. Uh, well, I don't believe that because as it says in the book of Hebrews, he said, by faith, he offered up his offering. Amen. And that faith, the Bible said, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've got hope tonight when I pray to the Lord, when I ask God something. How many got hope tonight? I'm praying, God, I've got hope tonight. I'm living for you. When Hezekiah, when dead was, the Lord told him in 50, you're going to die and you're not going to live. Get your house in order. He turned his face to the wall. He began to say, God, you know me. You know all about me. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you know that I've tried to do right and I've tried to live for you. And God heard his petition and added 15 years into his life. Amen. Amen. Because he made an effort. Yeah. He didn't just sit down and say, well, I'm going to die. But no, he made up an effort. He said, I'm not going to die. I'm going to go before God. I'm going to ask him for help. The woman that had the issue of blood, she could have just, the Bible said for 12 years, she yeah. was in misery. Amen. She spent all her living on the physicians, and she was none of the better. She was bleeding to death, children. If you please, she was bleeding as a woman would bleed, and she just kept bleeding for 12 years. She couldn't get the salt. Amen. But she said within herself, she didn't quit, Brother Jim. She said, if I could just but touch the hem of this garment of this man Jesus, then I know I'm going to be made whole. And the crowd was there, and she had to go through the crowd. She had to press through the turmoil. But when she got through the crowd, she made that effort to touch the garment. And when she did, he said, Thy faith has made thee whole. It's because she made an effort tonight. we got to make that effort tonight if we want to help from God. That's right. Remember the man that was on a bed? Mm -hmm. They couldn't get, get him to Jesus. They believed in prayer. They wanted to get him to Jesus. They couldn't get him to Jesus, so they went up on the roof. Yeah. They started tearing the roof off. Amen. Amen. They was determined. Like, are you determined tonight? That's it. Are you really determined? Amen. They said, well, we'll just let him down. Let him down by ropes. Jesus healed the man. You know what Jesus said? Their faith made you whole. Because they made an effort. 
they made the star. Just like I said about Cain and Abel. There was something in Cain that wasn't right. And when they offered up their gift before the Lord, and they had both, Cain offered up grain, amen, or the fruit of the field, and Abel offered up the, of the sheep, of the flock, thank God. That's all they had to offer. God knows what you have to offer. Amen. I, God, I couldn't offer up sheep to, to the Lord tonight. I couldn't bring a tithe of the sheep and the goats and the rams in here because I'm not a farmer. I don't have all those things. But I can provide those things and God has provided me with. Amen. That's, that's what you do in this life. Amen. But when he, even though he provided, amen, it didn't do it by faith. He didn't really believe it. Thank God he just done it because no doubt he felt pressured because Abel was doing his. But when he saw God was acceptable of Abel's and wasn't acceptable of his, he was jealous of his brother and then had been made it up in his mind he was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord saw his countenance. See, you can look at people and see where they're at. Yeah. The Lord looked at his countenance and he said, more or less, he said, what's the matter with you, Cain? How can your counsels change? Hear what the Lord said. If thou doest well, mm -hmm. well thou not be accepted. That's it. But if thou doest not well, Amen. sin lieth at the door. Amen. That's where it's at today. That's sin it. is lying at the door. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, if you go right, you can be free from sin. Yeah. But if you go left, Sin will take over your life. It'll start out a little bit. Might be sip, sip a little drink of beer. Maybe get smoke a little puff off of the joint. And then the next thing you know, you're sticking needles in your arms. Amen. Sin, it, it, it don't have no end. It just starts out little. And it just she keeps adding. It's like leaven. The Bible talked about the leaven of the Pharisees. The leaven, it just keeps adding to your life. And, and, and sin takes over your life. Thank God. But if you don't get free from that sin, it's a poison. It's a sickness. And you know what the end of it is? much as I love my children. As much as I love my children. I'd be so misfortunate to go to hell. And if they would go to hell too, we'd be there gnashing on one another with our teeth. Yeah. I've heard people make foolish statements like, well, if I go to hell, I'm going to have plenty of company. There won't be no company in hell. No. You ever <coughs> see them? Dogs are fighting and just gnashing and trying to devour one another. That's what I picture hell to be like. People's going to be in so much torment, so yeah. much misery. That's what it's going to be. People's just going to be devouring one another. And people don't know, thank God. That's where the devil, that's where his end is. Mm -hmm. You know that? That's where the devil, the Bible said, hell and all the things are going to be cast into a lake of fire. Amen. It's going to burn for eternity. Hey, God, how long is eternity? It's forever. That's right. There'll be no relief. But man, is going to go there. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God didn't make hell for man. Right. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Yeah. It wasn't created for us. I'm not trying to scare nobody. It wouldn't do no good to scare anybody. But I'll tell you what. Get this down in your heart. Amen. And hold on to it. Yeah. Amen. Because it's for your life tonight. Amen. It's for your life. Yeah. If you don't know the Lord tonight. Amen. You need to start thinking about yourself. Right. Because the devil's sure thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try Jesus? Yeah. You tried everything else. Yeah. Why don't you try the Lord? That's what the Lord told me. He said, why don't you just try me? You've tried everything else. Yeah. You've done all the wickedness you can do. You've tasted of all the things of this world. You know, I look around... I showed my boys one time. I took a picture, a yearbook, and I showed all a picture, a school picture of all the kids in this picture. And I said, "Do you see this little group right here?" I said, "All these, this little group right here, the biggest part of them went to college and they got an education. Some of them to doctors and dentists. See this group over here." I said, this group didn't care for some day or night. I said, they didn't learn anything. They drank and they partied. And I said, a lot of them was even dead while they was young. Mm -hmm. I said, I had a choice to 
which group I want to run around with. Right. If you think, every one of you, when you go back to school, you had a choice of the group. They called both groups wanted to, but you had to make a choice. But I'm going to tell you what, make the choice to go with God. Make the choice to follow what's right. Amen. You might be different from everybody else, but in the long run, you're going to win. Yeah. They're going to come to you for help. They're going to come to you for prayer. People that, that would, you think would make fun of you. Hey, Amen. There's been people that looked at me and thought, oh, he'll never make it. But now they need my help because I've walked for the Lord all these years. Thank God they've got confidence in my prayer. Amen. Because I do live for God. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel tonight. I'm going to stand up for it. How many are going to stand up for what's right tonight? God wants you to live for it. Living for God is just, I'm not going to get to the best on this. But it's you start out and you repent. That's the first thing. And if you were in trouble and your mind's tormented, you know that's what you need to do. And you get baptized. People say, well, you get baptized and you're saved. No. Baptism is for the remission of your sins. In other words, if I owe a debt, that debt needs to be remitted. I've used this term before. If Brother Johnny gave me $100, I said, I'll pay you back next week. And I told him, I said, well, Brother Johnny, I've not got the money. And he'd just tell me, he'd say, well, don't worry about it. But every time I looked at Brother Johnny, even though he told me to forget about it, I would always, every time I saw Brother Johnny, I would think about the $100 that I was supposed to pay him back. That would be a debt. That would be a guilty conscience. It'd be in my mind. But if Brother Don would take that $100, and he's like, here, I'll give Brother Johnny a $100 for you. Don't worry about it no more. And he would remit the debt. Then when I looked at Brother Johnny, I would never feel guilty again. That's what remission is. When you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you look to the cross, your sins are remitted. They're forgiven, thank God. You're forgiven. And that gives you the path. The Bible said through the blood of Jesus, we can go into the holies of holies. We can approach unto God and receive the, of the Spirit into our lives. And God will begin to change us. And God, He'll make you a new person. He'll make you feel different. And you'll, you'll change overnight. You won't even know you're changing. But you'll want to follow peace. I know in my life, I've been on the way long enough, I know what causes peace and what causes trouble. Don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of you have been on the way. Been there long enough. If you don't do what's right, you're going to, you've got, you'll suffer trouble. Amen. 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 How many ever been chastised by the Lord? Amen. I have. Have you ever been chastised? I've seen your hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. See everybody get chastised. Amen. The Bible said he chastises them that he loves. That? Amen. But... Well, I don't want to be chastised, so I want to do what's right. Yeah. Amen. That's what that's what it's all about. What the book's for. Amen. To put us in remembrance of the things that's right, so that we can walk before the Lord and we can be pleasing in His sight. Amen. And in return, God will give us peace. That's what I mean, Brother Jim. Peace. Yeah. How many needs peace tonight? Amen. My mother gave me peace. She loved me. I knew her hugs and her kisses was real. My grandmother, when she kissed me, kissed my brown, hugged me, I know I trusted her because I knew it was real. Yeah. But mother and grandmother could only go so far. Yeah. They're both gone now. Now I've got to trust in Jesus. Yeah. And I found out that his his shoulders just as big. Yeah. And he's always there for me. Thank God. Amen. And he'll be there for you. Amen. Let's let's get a song tonight, Jennifer. Let's all sing. And I know we got some here that wants to get anointed. Amen. We want you to. This is serious. And God loves you tonight. He loves Amen. every one of you. Amen. And you know this all over, it's not just for sinners, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All should be.